The Islamic invasion of Africa, beginning in the 7th century, marked a transformative period in the continent's history. This series of military campaigns, initiated by the early Islamic caliphates, sought to expand Muslim rule beyond the Arabian Peninsula and establish a foothold in North Africa. The invasions, which spanned several decades, were driven by both religious and political motives, with Islam spreading through both conquest and conversion. These campaigns led to the gradual decline of Byzantine and indigenous Berber rule, as Muslim armies advanced westward, capturing key cities and territories. By the early 8th century, much of North Africa had fallen under Arab control, laying the groundwork for the spread of Islam deeper into the continent and into Europe via the Iberian Peninsula. This period of conquest not only reshaped the political landscape, but also left a lasting cultural and religious legacy that continues to influence the region today. First Invasion The first organized invasion of North Africa by the Caliphate began in 647 AD. This marked a significant expansion of Islamic military efforts beyond the Arabian Peninsula. The campaign was initiated by the Caliphate under the leadership of Sheikh Abdallah ibn Saad, who departed from Medina with a force of 20,000 Arab soldiers. Their destination was Memphis, in Egypt, where they would join an additional 20,000 troops, forming a sizable army for the invasion of North Africa. The primary target of this invasion was the Carthaginian Exarchate, ruled by Gregory, who had declared his independence from the Byzantine Empire. Gregory, recognizing the threat posed by the advancing Arab forces, mobilized his troops to defend his territory. Despite his efforts to resist the Arab forces, Gregory's army met with the Muslims in battle near the city of Sufetula, located approximately 220 kilometers south of Carthage. The Battle of Sufetula proved to be a decisive encounter. Gregory's forces were soundly defeated by the Arabs, leading to the death of the Exarch himself. This victory gave the Arabs control over much of the region, and the fall of Gregory signaled the end of resistance from the Carthaginian Exarchate. With Gregory's death, the Byzantine hold on North Africa was significantly weakened, allowing the Arab forces to consolidate their power in the region. In the aftermath of the battle, much of Egypt submitted to the Caliphate's authority. The local populations were compelled to pay tribute to their new rulers, and the territories of North Africa became vassal states under Muslim control. The rapid success of the Arab forces was a testament to their military prowess and strategic leadership. The conquest, however, did not end immediately after Gregory's defeat, as the campaign continued for another 15 months. By 648, after securing the region and enforcing tribute, Sheikh Abdallah ibn Saad led his forces back to Egypt. This marked the conclusion of the initial phase of Muslim expansion into North Africa. The campaign not only expanded the borders of the caliphate, but also established a foothold for future Islamic conquests further west. The integration of North Africa into the growing Islamic empire was a crucial step in the spread of Islam across the Mediterranean and into Europe. Despite these military successes, the caliphate soon faced internal turmoil. A civil war erupted within the Arab elite, driven by clan rivalries and disputes over leadership. The conflict, known as the First Fitna, was a significant disruption to the early Islamic empire and had long-lasting consequences for its political stability. The civil war reflected deep divisions within the Muslim community, particularly concerning issues of succession and governance. One of the key events during this period of internal strife was the assassination of Caliph Uthman in 656. Uthman's death created a power vacuum and intensified the rivalries among the various factions within the caliphate. His successor, Ali ibn Abi Talib, faced considerable opposition from rival claimants to power, and his leadership was constantly challenged. Ali's rule was marked by further conflict, and he too would ultimately be killed in 661. His death marked the end of a tumultuous era in early Islamic history, as the caliphate transitioned into the rule of the Umayyad dynasty. The internal divisions that had surfaced during the first fitna would continue to shape the political landscape of the Islamic world for generations. Thus, while the conquest of North Africa marked a significant military achievement for the early Islamic empire, it was followed by a period of civil unrest and political instability that threatened the unity of the caliphate. These early internal conflicts would have profound implications for the future of Islamic governance and the expansion of the empire. Second Invasion 
After the civil war that rocked the early Islamic Caliphate, the Arabs resumed their expansion into North Africa with renewed vigor. In 665 AD, a new military campaign was launched to conquer the African Exarchate, which was still under Byzantine control. This invasion was part of a larger strategy to extend Islamic rule across the Mediterranean. The Arabs, led by their military commanders, sought to weaken Byzantine power in the region and gain control of the valuable coastal territories. By 689, the new campaign had reached its conclusion. The Byzantine forces, numbering 30,000 soldiers, were decisively defeated. This victory was achieved through the efforts of 40,000 Muslim soldiers, reinforced by an additional 10,000 Arabs led by Uqba ibn Nafi, a prominent military commander. Uqba's forces marched out of Damascus and, over the course of several years, advanced through much of North Africa, leaving a trail of conquests in their wake. The campaign further destabilized Byzantine influence in the region and opened the way for the establishment of Muslim control. One of the key achievements of this campaign was the founding of the city of Kerwa in 670. Located in present-day Tunisia, Kerwa became a strong fortress and an essential base for future military operations. The city quickly grew into the capital of the Islamic region known as Afrikia, which encompassed the coastal areas of what is now western Libya, Tunisia, and eastern Algeria. Kerwa's strategic importance lay not only in its military function, but also in its role as a center of Islamic culture and governance in North Africa. With Kerwa securely established, the Arabs continued their conquest further into the Maghrib, the northwestern part of Africa. This region, known to the Arabs as the Maghrib, was home to various Berber tribes who had historically resisted outside powers, including the Romans and Byzantines. Under Uqba ibn Nafi's command, the Arab forces pressed forward, capturing key coastal cities such as Bugia and eventually reaching Tangier. These cities had once been part of the Roman province of Mauritania, and their capture symbolized the expanding reach of the caliphate. Despite his early successes, Uqba ibn Nafi struggled to maintain control over the newly conquered lands. A rebellion broke out in the rear of his army, threatening the stability of the Arab hold on North Africa. Uqba was forced to abandon his advance and return to suppress the uprising. During one of these battles against local African rebels, Uqba was killed, a significant blow to the Arab forces. His death marked a temporary setback for the caliphate's ambitions in the region. After Uqba's death, Zuhair ibn Qain took command of the Arab army. Although he achieved several important military victories, including quelling some of the rebellions, he too eventually fell in battle. The loss of two key commanders in such a short period illustrated the challenges the Arabs faced in maintaining control over the region, particularly in the face of fierce local resistance. The Berbers, native to North Africa, led a determined resistance against the Arab invaders. Initially, their resistance was led by Kassela, a powerful Berber leader. After his death, the resistance was taken up by Queen Kahina, a legendary figure in North African history. Kahina's leadership became the focal point of Berber opposition to Arab rule, and she successfully held off the Arab forces for several years, demonstrating remarkable military and political acumen. Queen Kahina's resistance continued until 703, when she was eventually killed in battle. Her death marked the end of organized Berber resistance to the Arab conquest, and with her fall, the Arabs were able to consolidate their control over the Maghrib. However, the legacy of Berber resistance persisted and the integration of the Berber people into the Islamic world would shape the future of the region for centuries to come. Despite the ultimate Arab victory, the conquest of North Africa was far from easy. The campaigns were marked by fierce resistance, internal rebellions, and the deaths of key commanders. Yet, the establishment of Islamic rule in North Africa laid the foundation for further Arab expansion, ultimately leading to the spread of Islam across the Western Mediterranean and into Southern Europe. Third Invasion The renewed conquest of North Africa began under the leadership of Hassan ibn al-Numan, an Arab commander tasked with consolidating Muslim control over the region. His initial campaigns were aimed at reclaiming key territories lost during previous conflicts. However, the Byzantine Empire, unwilling to relinquish its hold on North Africa, quickly redeployed troops from Constantinople. These Byzantine forces were reinforced by soldiers from Sicily and a contingent of Visigoth from Roman Hispania, creating a formidable alliance against the Arabs. 
Faced with this strong resistance, the Arab forces were forced to retreat to their base in Kerwa. Kerwa, which had become a vital Arab stronghold, provided a strategic refuge where Hassan could regroup and plan his next move. Despite the temporary setback, the Arabs were not deterred. With the arrival of spring, Hassan launched a renewed offensive, determined to drive the Byzantines and their allies out of North Africa once and for all. This decisive moment came at the Battle of Carthage. In this crucial confrontation, the Arabs, under Hassan's command, managed to defeat the combined Byzantine and Visigothic forces. The victory at Carthage was a turning point in the conquest, as it led to the fall of one of the most important cities in the region. By 698, the Arabs had entered Carthage, marking the end of Byzantine dominance in North Africa. The city's ruins were repurposed, with its stones used to help build the new city of Tunisia, which would become a center of Arab power in the region. Following their victory at Carthage, the Arabs faced another major battle near the city of Utica. Once again, Hassan's forces emerged victorious, further weakening Byzantine control. This defeat forced the Byzantines to abandon North Africa, leaving the Arabs in control of vast stretches of territory. By the early 8th century, the Arab forces had successfully seized nearly all of North Africa, solidifying their dominance over the region. As Arab control expanded, the newly conquered lands were divided into three administrative regions. Egypt, with its capital in Fustat, formed one region. The Maghreb, which included modern-day Morocco and Algeria, was governed from Fez, and Afrikia, encompassing present-day Tunisia and parts of Libya, had its center in Kerwa. These divisions reflected the growing complexity of the Arab administration and the need to manage such a vast and diverse territory effectively. Hassan Ibn al-Numan's successor, Musa Ibn Nusayr, was a talented administrator and military leader who played a key role in the further conquest of the Maghreb. Musa was not only focused on military expansion but also on spreading Islam among the indigenous Berber populations of North Africa. His campaigns into the Far Maghreb were marked by both military success and efforts to integrate the Berbers into the Islamic fold. During his campaigns, Musa and his sons captured a staggering 300,000 prisoners, the vast majority of whom were sold into slavery. The proceeds from these sales were funneled into the public treasury, helping to fund further military campaigns and bolster the Islamic State's finances. Additionally, Musa conscripted 30,000 prisoners into military service, swelling the ranks of his army and ensuring a steady supply of soldiers for future conflicts. Musa also had to contend with frequent raids by the Byzantine fleet, which continued to harass the Arab forces from the sea. In response, Musa built his own fleet to counter the Byzantine naval presence, demonstrating his strategic acumen and adaptability. This naval force allowed him to secure the coastline and protect Arab interests in the Mediterranean, further solidifying Muslim control over North Africa. By 709, Musa's forces had advanced deep into the Maghreb, culminating in the capture of Tangier. This marked the completion of the Arab conquest of North Africa and opened the door for future Muslim expansion into the Iberian Peninsula. Musa's leadership, both as a military commander and an administrator, was instrumental in transforming North Africa into a vital part of the Islamic world. His achievements laid the foundation for the eventual spread of Islam into Europe. Completion of Invasion By 709, the Arab Caliphate had gained control over almost all of North Africa, with the exception of the city of Ceuta. This conquest was a significant milestone, as it gave the Arabs a strategic foothold in the region. With North Africa under their command, the Arabs began to look beyond, specifically toward Hispania, modern-day Spain, which lay across the Mediterranean. The conquest of North Africa provided the Arabs with the perfect base to plan and launch their invasion of Hispania. Musa Ibn Nusayr, the Arab governor of the region, spent several years preparing for this invasion, utilizing both military and diplomatic efforts to ensure success. He secured alliances with local Berber tribes and gathered intelligence on the political landscape of Hispania, which was weakened by internal strife. In 711, Musa entrusted the Berber commander Tariq Ibn Ziyad with the task of leading the invasion. Tariq, with a small but well-trained force, crossed the Strait of Gibraltar and began the conquest of Hispania. His successful campaigns would mark the beginning of Muslim rule in the Iberian Peninsula, changing the course of European history. 
What set North Africa apart from many other regions conquered by the Arabs was their ability to settle and integrate into the local society. Over time, the Arab presence in North Africa became deeply rooted, and they established a lasting cultural and demographic influence. Unlike other regions where Arab control was temporary or faced resistance, North Africa became a permanent part of the Arab world. To this day, Arabs remain the majority population in North Africa, a testament to the lasting impact of their early conquests. The successful integration of the Arab culture with indigenous Berber traditions helped shape the identity of the region, which continues to play a vital role in the Islamic world.